Inarguably Canada's most successful rock star of the 1980s, with 16 million albums sold internationally, and arguably Canada's most successful ever, Brian Adams had by the mid-1990s slowed down his output to a carefully managed megastar trickle. In many ways, Adams' career cuts the crux of the Canadian pop cult tradition. There's something in his precise, upward navigation of the radio-friendly, rock and roll middle which fits into a noteworthy, if hardly proud, Canadian pop cult tradition. With his ear for a killer hook and his jeans and t-shirt faux rebel pose, Adam seems less than individual artist than a computer-generated cluster of slightly diluted influences. A bit Springsteen, a bit Mellencamp, a bit Stewart, a bit Sting, and a bit U2. In the mid-1980s, when it was the height of rock star Vogue to appear cause committed, the stadium-friendly Brian Adams not only appeared prominently at such events such as Live Aid and Amnesty International's Conspiracy of Hope Tour, he, along with manager Bruce Allen, then songwriting partner Jim Valance, and West Coast Canadian middle-of-the-road mogul David Foster, was instrumental in the organization of the Canadian version of Band-Aid, a 1985's veritable Canadian pop, Tears Are Not Enough. In 1992, after building a career on a combination of insanely catchy hooks and polite Canadian self-effacement, Adams went publicly ballistic when the CRTC, Canada's Federal Broadcasting Regulation Agency, ruled that the singer's most successful album to date, 1991's Waking Up the Neighbors, did not qualify under current regulations as Canadian content. Since it was co-written with British producer Robert John Mutt Lang, the non-CanCon status of Waking Up the Neighbors stood to severely restrict its rotation and theoretically its royalty-making potential on Canadian radio. His ranting sounded familiar. It was the border transcendent superstar, successful beyond wildest childhood dreams, now firmly peered with their greatest idols, yet still raging against the provincial, narrow-minded, and success-hating Canadian mindset. Like many Canadian superstars who have turned their infatuation with imported entertainment into international middle-of-the-road success, Brian Adams has processed the national experience of outside observation into a clinically precise, eminently marketable, and finally, hollow form of replication.